important to understand how asanas work as a yogic practice. Mm-hmm. That the practice of asanas won't necessarily bring you yoga mm-hmm. or self-realization or enlightenment, however you want to call it. They could make you a very um, egocentric, uh, <laughs> not nice person to be around, you know, <laughs> uh, arrogant and self-centered and all of that and, yeah. and uh, healthy, strong, flexible body and a show off and all of that. And, mm-hmm. and um, but you're still not a kind person and, and uh, you might not wake up to the fact. Yeah. Uh, your, about your diet or, or how you treat other people or anything. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah. and so, you know, standing on your head <laughs> with the thinking about God, hmm, <laughs> that's, 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 uh, that could yield different kinds of results. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It's a really beautiful, beautiful. Cause it's, it's really good that you're mentioning this because for me, that was definitely, when I first came to teach you training, you know, it was all just this brand new world to me. And I remember that asana took, took a longer time with me, like the connection of like really understanding even the meaning of it and how you describe it now is, is so beautifully. Yeah. That's what it is. Like I, I really, I understand it now, but we're nearly 10 years later. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I really, yeah. And I also feel for me also, I sometimes explain this, to others is like also feeling as the animal when you're in the asana and feeling their pain their suffering their pleasure their joy and kind of the transforming into these animal bodies as well in asana it makes me um love asana because it, it you, you always i don't know i just love i also love the playfulness of it and it reminds me of being with the animals which i really love as well like i really i don't know yeah i just Especially like when we think about dolphin or something, I'm like, ah, my dolphins, you know, it's really, it's also really beautiful how, yeah, for me, a connection with, with the animals and the earth through it is also really beautiful, I think. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, but um, so to go back to, um to then you had a platform to to uh, have your veganism in in a, in a in a yoga context in a sense like you were yeah how much how much longer after that did you start using that platform of uh, of yoga and veganism um maybe three or four years no maybe four or five years mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah and so, because you, because I remember you were saying also something about, because you also have a dancing background, right? And you were um, teaching aerobics and then all of a sudden also someone kind of pushed you a little bit to then also teach yoga. And is, isn't it, was, was there a story that you were kind of like, there was a class that someone was sick or something and said, okay, you're going to teach this, uh, this class now. Yeah. Yes. <sighs> That is what, that's how I became a yoga teacher. Yeah. Yeah. That um, my teacher, a teacher that David and I had been going to um, in New York. uh, I tried to get her a job at this uh, aerobic studio that I taught aerobics at. And um, she didn't show up. uh, And so... (laughs) There's a room full of people. It was the third time that she didn't show up. And so I was pushed in there. Hmm. And wow. um, yeah, so, I mean, I don't know. I, people say it wasn't so such a bad class and they liked it. I don't know, but it was, um, I did my best. And um, yeah, yeah. And, um, but then of course that uh, propelled me to, do better Mm -hmm. and to use it how could i incorporate the vegan animal rights message Mm -hmm. and so it it just pushed me to um want to learn want to uh find things discover things uh connect things study so i went on that quest of um 
a quest for enlightenment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In a serious way. And, um, but, you know, it kind of happens when you're on your own doing something. Um, that, that, that's good. That can be great. And, um, but to actually have other people there wanting, asking you questions mm-hmm. and wanting you to help them with something, it puts you in a different space and causes you to, to work really hard. Mm-hmm. Harder than you might have worked just on your own. Yeah, right. Right, right, right. So you also get pushed by the others to, to be that person. I mean, I think um, Yogi, it was Yogi Bhajan said, um, you, learn how to, you learn how to teach through teaching. Mm-hmm. You discover who you are through mm-hmm. teaching. Yeah, it's so true. You discover who, what your capabilities are. You discover your weaknesses. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and when you discover those weaknesses, you know, if you're, if you're smart, I mean, some people, when they discover their weaknesses by teaching, they try to cover, cover those weaknesses up through arrogance and kind of a meanness, sort of, you know, humiliating students or, you know, kind mm. of strutting around the place, you know, I mean, you've seen it probably, it's an unfortunate <laughs> thing, but, um, but other people would, would take that situation and turn it another way to like, wow, I got to better myself. I mean, these people um, are asking me questions. I don't know the answer. I want to know the answer. Well, like they, I also want to know the answer. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to get to work, you know, and, um, and then it becomes this exciting, exciting adventure. Mm-hmm. Self-discovery. Yeah. Of the discovery really of, of how we're not separate, mm-hmm. of how we're not, yeah, we're not a separate person, and and um, that actually, it also allows you to discover that the students, so called your students, are not your students. Mm-hmm. They're they're God in disguise coming to test you. That's how I think. And so, why not collaborate instead yeah. of trying to do a superior trip mm. and pretend? You know more, and yeah. you know none of us, none of us knows anything. We're yeah. all just beginners here, you know. We're all yeah. just like uh, trying to do our best, trying to learn. And actually, when you're at that state stage, and you recognize it, and you're um, and you find joy in it, that's when when uh, really exciting things start to happen. Revelation, mm-hmm. insights, and connections you know humility humility is a very Mm. potent a potent part of the whole thing to cultivate Mm -hmm. that's it that's it i think that's a really some 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 that or or one that people could forget but it's so extremely important um on, on this quest on this path for sure and um, and something that I also thought for for I think for many people you are an inspiration, being an inspiration. You definitely were for me when we started connecting, and then you know it all went so fast. You know before I knew it, we were in New York, and there you were. It was just um, you've all, you've inspired a lot of people. Do you have people that inspired you on the vegan path? Do you have some vegan heroes or people that you really admire and that are vegan? I worship my dear friend Ingrid Newkirk. Mm-hmm. She's the best. Awe-inspiring yeah. in, in so many ways I can't even hmm. I can't I mean talk about a humble person. She's yeah. a humble person. Talk about exemplifying yogic ideals <laughs> without thinking of herself as a a yogi. Mm-hmm. She's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Of course, um, Captain Paul yeah. Watson. I'm also a big fan of his. Yeah. And uh, he's a cutie. And yeah. uh, he's very eloquent. Yeah. He's very eloquent. He's a very eloquent speaker. <laughs> and funny, too. He's funny. Yeah. Ingrid, Ingrid is funny, too. You see, these people have sense, they yeah. have a sense of humor. Mm. 
and no, uh, too, in a, in a very know, way. dealing with a very serious issue, but yeah. they're so deeply into it that they go to that place where there's joy and there's humor and there's like a kind of a, they, both of those people, they also realize that they themselves are not going to change the world. Mm -hmm. They understand what true activism is. Yeah. It's really just, you know, rolling up your sleeves and getting to work, being <laughs> part of something huge that you don't really know where it's going. Mm -hmm. And, you're not in control. Mm -hmm. You're not in control. We're not in control of the outcome. We're barely in control of our our immediate actions. Yeah, know? yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah. we certainly are not in control of the ultimate outcome of our, our actions. And Krishna reminds us of that in the Bhagavad Gita. Mm -hmm. And he says, "So what? You know, it doesn't matter. Why do you have to know? Like, would that stop you from doing what you're doing if you mm -hmm. knew that it wouldn't?" A difference in the end <laughs> it might stop some people yeah 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 it might stop some people but um i think uh people like ingrid and and paul watson they they see the reality i mean they've been there they've been on the front yeah. lines oh yeah for sure. and um they know how they know the situation it mm -hmm. doesn't stop from working you know a hundred plus percent and giving a hundred plus percent mm -hmm. of their heart mind and time and everything yeah, yeah. and yeah. that is that is a very yogic uh attitude yeah to kind of relinquish doership mm -hmm. to understand mm -hmm. that it's not in your control it's not in your power the ultimate outcome Mm -hmm. yeah but act act um to the best of your ability and mm -hmm. even discovering what that is that's a great quest <laughs> most people most people are too lazy to even like do to go that way you know i mean yeah so true yeah yeah to know what is their best you know and uh anyway and the teacher but you want to discover your best unless you do it with kindness yeah yeah. And do you feel um, that, um, so Magali, who's actually the, the director of um, Givmoxi Luxembourg, she told me, because I was really down at the beginning of the year thinking like, oh, Corona, you know, my career is over. The, the yoga studio that I was teaching at, we went bankrupt, like so many studios. And it was really difficult for, for a bit. And she was like, but, but Caro, like they're going to want all this vegan stuff. They're going to want it more now because of of what people have been facing with COVID and seeing what COVID meant for people. Do you see that as well? Do you feel that that maybe even the time has changed even more and people are getting more conscious and, and wanting the, the vegan thing even more? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. You don't know. Uh, I, I mean, <laughs> when I look at statistics, which I do, yeah now and then about uh how many vegans are in the world and how many animals were killed today and these kinds of things that are on various websites and mm -hmm. your audience knows about them oh yeah um the consumption of meat and dairy products is actually on the rise mm -hmm. uh does it discourage me from doing what i'm doing no hmm compels me yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> um i'm not gonna stop no and um so it just means uh more skillful means yeah 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 myself i have to develop more skillful means make more connections mm -hmm. and um share those connections share yeah. those insights and um do my best and keep discovering what that is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a really Never beautiful. Stop. Never stop. Yeah, yeah. That's, because I, I, I feel the same. Like it's kind of like hope dies last for me, and I always have that hope of like you know. Because I was a little bit like, yeah, I don't know, I don't know if that's the case. But regardless of what's happening, like let we have to keep going and we have to follow our heart and uh, and be there for the animals. 
you know? Exactly.